Just what was going on inside this well-kept foster home in this quiet Stratford neighborhood? An investigator at the Department of Children and Families called it cruel. DCF would conclude it was inhumane. What happened is outlined in these confidential reports obtained by Team 8 about foster parents Teresa Soltis and her husband Michael. The, the child that they said was in a, a closed playpen. I mean, why would you do that? It was a startling discovery in 2001, made by a DCF investigator after receiving a tip. To give you an idea, in a darkened room, a two and a half year old girl was found in a playpen, which was covered by a wood board which was secured into place by bungee cords, which were hooked into holes drilled into the wood. The report says the child could not stand up. She napped and slept at night with the device in place. And that's not all. Soltis admitted using medical tape at times to bind the child's legs together. The question is whether these allegations from the DCF, which they say you have admitted to, is true. Not completely. Well, it's not completely me. If you'll come in, I'd be glad to explain. Inside, Soltis explained these methods were used to stop the child from jumping out of the playpen and harming herself and other foster children. Parents are not perfect. Gary Kleba is with the Department of Children and Families. Everybody makes mistakes, but DCF itself called this inhumane, unaffectionate, and they called it physical discipline. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's more than just a mistake. It, it, it's clearly unacceptable. There is no question. It's unacceptable. It's against our policy. We will not permit it. When we find out that it happens, we will act swiftly to stop it. DCF did act swiftly by removing the child kept in the playpen and another youngster and ordering that no more foster children could be placed in the Salta's home. But the story doesn't end there. Incredibly, DCF allowed the Saltises to keep and eventually adopt this other foster child. Why? Because they promised not to do it again. I'm trying to understand when you find a foster parent binding a child's foot, putting them in the playpen and closing the cover with bungee cords, and DCF determined that this was done frequently, how do you ever trust that foster parent again? Again, we have to make an assessment based upon all the information that we have. And complicating that decision was the fact that child the Sultises were allowed to adopt was considered medically fragile and it would be difficult to find a new home for her. The decision to change the placement of a child with special needs is even more complicated. It's a tragedy. But Jeannie Milstein, the state's child advocate, says she believes DCF did not make the right decision because when it comes to relocating kids with special needs, it's nearly impossible. There's such a desperate need for those services that the system that is designed to protect kids often turns a blind eye to the facility. DCF stands by its decision, but admits because of what we have uncovered, changes will be made. We will be reviewing our policies and procedures to make sure that when we make decisions in foster homes where we're considering treating different children in a different way, that we have a sound basis for that. So we want to ensure that we've